What's up guys, Kyle Moore here for DJ Tech Tools and welcome back for another DIY tutorial. On today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to build a desktop drum machine that stands alone just by using arcade buttons and a pocket operator. So let's get started. First up, let's look at the brains of our entire project, the pocket operator by Teenage Engineering. Next, let's look at our parts and supplies. 24 and 30 millimeter arcade buttons from focusattack.com, mini arcade buttons, 10K potentiometers, 3.5 millimeter and quarter inch audio jacks, standard 3.5 millimeter audio cables, a micro lipo charger, diode, on off switch, and lithium ion battery. 30 gauge silicone wire, light tubes for our LEDs, chroma caps from DJ Tech Tools, 3D printing filament from Hatchbox 3D, wood stain and rubber feet. Next, let's look at all the tools we're going to need. First up is Sugru Moldable Glue a Panavice Junior and helping hand tool, some hobby files and a mini hacksaw, a power drill, various bits, and a few screwdriver sizes. Lastly, we'll need soldering iron, exhaust fan, solder, flux, tweezers, and pliers. Now, first thing we need to do is lay out your design. For this, we're gonna utilize a handful of stencils I designed and 3D printed. You want to make sure that all of your designs on the inside are mirrored and opposite of what they actually will be on the other side. Also be sure to give plenty of space between all of the components so there's no shorts or anything running into each other. Next, let's make room for all of those components. Now, drill, cut, and saw your way through all of the dimensions of the box and make room for all of your parts. Be sure before drilling to double check the size of your inputs, sockets, and components. For the arcade buttons, we use spade bits, but I've also seen that hole saws tend to get a cleaner cut. For this project, we'll be using 16 24 millimeter Sanwa arcade buttons, accompanied by seven mini arcade buttons, and one 30 millimeter arcade button. Now, if you're using the tonic pocket operator like we are, be sure to make room for the microphone that's built into this version. Next, we'll need to drill holes for all of the LED light tubes. The hardest part of the enclosure will end up being the screen of the pocket operator. We had to score, cut, dremel, and file our way through this area. Now that our enclosure is complete, let's add some steam. There are actually some newer steams out there that can dry in as little as one hour. Time to solder and make some connections. First, prep your 30 gauge silicone wire by stripping the ends and tending them. Now, the lower left pin of each button on the pocket operator is what sends the signal from the button. So we're going to solder a wire to each of those points on the pocket operator and run it to an arcade button. We'll also be doing the same for each of the pins on the potentiometers. Now clean up any flux residue that's left behind with some rubbing alcohol. Now once everything's soldered on the pocket operator, there is going to be a lot of cables, so please mark everything accordingly. Next, we'll solder up the 30 millimeter arcade button. This is going to do the beat repeat hack. We'll also prep our B10K potentiometers that'll be panel mounted. There's actually a dummy pin, so we'll cut that fourth one off and we'll tin each of the pins and then solder a wire to each of the three. 
Next, we'll prep the audio in and out functionality by cutting an audio cable in half, stripping it, and pulling apart each of the wires inside. There should be three, a left, a right, and a ground channel. Sometimes the ground is in a covered wire. So we'll tin all three wires, and then solder them to three separate wires with plenty of length. Now it's time to put together our rechargeable battery setup. Thanks to our friends over at Adafruit, we were able to come up with the following schematic for the battery. This consists of a 3.7 volt, 500 milliamp lithium ion battery attached to a micro lipo charger board, then a diode to cut the voltage between the board and the pocket operator. First, we'll trim and tin the diode, then attach it to some wire. Then, we'll solder to the micro lipo board on the positive side. Next, we'll insert and solder our ground wire. Next, we'll connect our switch between our battery and the board. We'll then connect the positive and the negative points of the board to the back of the pocket operator for the first two points. Now that the stain on our enclosure is dried, let's pop in some components and buttons. First, we'll start with the 24mm Samba Arcade buttons. Then we'll move on to the mini arcade buttons. Next, we'll mount all of the potentiometers. Now that you've added washers and nuts, pop on those chroma caps. Insert your 30 millimeter Samwa arcade button for your beat repeat function. Now we'll add in your quarter inch and 3.5 millimeter inputs and outputs. Then, we'll add our panel mounted micro USB input, which we'll attach to the battery setup, and also the switch. Next, we'll boot up the 3D printer for some final pieces and some mounts for the battery inside the enclosure. Since we're using a cheap wood enclosure to help it from getting dinged up, we 3D printed some corners to help protect it. We then put rubber feet on the bottom to prevent it from slipping around when using. For some of the components such as the switch and the input jacks and even the battery, we don't have definite mounting materials, so we're going to be hot gluing and sugaruing a lot of these things to make sure nothing moves around once it's closed up. Now if you decided you don't like the battery setup we chose to use, there's also another option from Ditch Studios which is a battery pack to USB adapter. 
Next, we'll want to cover all of our connections which are really close with either Sugru or hot glue to make sure none of the leads touch. In addition, we used a plethora of Sugru to cover screws, hold buttons in place, mount cables, even to mount 3D printed hardware, keep things safe, and even cover the input jacks so they don't fall in. Now we'll solder the ground line of all of the buttons. We'll daisy chain them from one to the next. Then we'll connect that ground line to the beat repeat 30 millimeter arcade button and run that line, which is also attached to the ground of the pocket operator. Next, we'll take the signal button from each pocket operator button and solder it to a corresponding arcade button. For the beat repeat function, one wire of the 30 millimeter arcade button will go to the ground while the other will go to the negative of the speaker output pin on the back of the pocket operator. After we've connected all of the pocket operator buttons to the arcade buttons, it's time to add in your light tubes so that the LEDs from the pocket operator can shine through the casing. Now the light tubes should fit pretty snugly and not go anywhere, but if you find that they're falling out, you can easily put some transparent glue on the back to hold them in. Just make sure not to cover the ends that will go over top of the LED. Back to our battery. The micro lipo board, if you're using a 500 milliamp battery, you need to bridge these two pads. Next, we'll tin all of the pins on each of the input jacks and then connect the following wires accordingly. The three connections in the audio consist of your sync, your audio line, and your ground. Sync is yellow, audio is red, and ground is black. Next, to avoid any confusion with the two sets of potentiometers, we'll disconnect the ones on the pocket operator from the actual lines. Now, lastly, we will mount the pocket operator inside the enclosure. Load it up with plenty of hot glue to hook it to the case we're putting on the back for protection. Also make sure to either use plenty of wire ties or Sugru to hold your wires together and prevent them from moving around. mounted inside the enclosure. Lastly, you can seal it up with either hot glue, sugru, or put on some hinges. Now, if you like this concept but want to keep the pocket operator portable, Ditch Studios has a really awesome case with some larger buttons that we really enjoy. Now, let's boot it up and try it out.
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Stay tuned to DJTechTools.com for more tips, tricks, and DIY tutorials. Take care.